Oh, bonjour. And he gone away with them, he did the car, so sea shark, so then. And he should not be. We'll get you down. The fire society. That will be a sacred pipe Sunday. My school name is uh, Nigan Nawewidan. And I didn't get that at birth, as I should have. I didn't get that name until I came home from Wounded Knee in 1973. I was going out to South Dakota to send the women, the children, to lay your life right on the line for what you believe in. I earned that name and I earned this feather to care. I went through a ceremony after wounded knee and my, my people decided they were going to give me an eagle feather and make me a chief. Because my great grandfather was White Crane, he was one of the principal chiefs of our nation. But I was told back then that you, there was a time in our history when you couldn't even touch an eagle feather. You couldn't even touch an eagle feather unless you had an Indian name. That's how sacred, that's how sacred this feather was. There's nothing to put on a bustle to trim and trim with tinfoil and colors and tape to them. It is very, very sacred. So they sent a young man out into the woods to seek a name and give him tobacco. Thank you. And on the third night, on the third night of his dream, he said he, about two o'clock in the morning, he could see the sheep lightning coming, coming in the west. And when that he started to blow back and forth. And all of a sudden, there was a bolt of lightning. And he woke him up and started to drizzle. Packed up his gear and came back. The next morning in the uh, purification ceremony, he told me from that day forth, my name was Jane the gone the way we done. The thunder before the storm. And I like that a lot better than Clyde. And I tell you this because I want every single one of you, every single one of you, women that are pregnant, women that are just getting married, young couples, Start putting your tobacco on. Start hanging your tobacco to an elder. And get a name for your child. Take back your identity. Take back your traditional way of life. I'm just going to say a few words here this morning. Because a lot has already been said. First of all, I want you to know that my heart soared like an eagle today. So it's like an eagle today to see my brothers and sisters, tribes of all nations, north and south, coming together in the sacred circle of life. The circle of life that withered and died in the blood-stoked snows and the ridges of Wounded Knee in 1890. The sacred circle that was broken in the last major massacre at Wounded Knee. I come here today to say that the sacred tree that withered and died that day, the roots have been nourished again, and that tree grows. I know a young warrior here in the Bay Area by the name of Layman Brightman. I met him back in 1971 at one of the only remaining sun dances in America held on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. When I went out there, I couldn't believe what I witnessed and what I saw at the beginning of the American Indian Movement. I thought I was at the wrong place. I saw food stands all the way around the arbor. I saw Sundancers during the break, they'd be walking around with snow cones, hamburgers. There was Ferris wheels and merry-go-rounds surrounding it. There was a rodeo going on about an eighth of a mile out in the field with a, a loudspeaker like this. They were introducing different men, young warriors, that were going to ride bulls. About two o'clock in the afternoon, they'd bring the Sundance drum out. No. They'd bring the power drum, so-called power drum. Yeah, are you with me? And all the drunks would come there. 
you dance around the sacred sea of life. Myself and a young warrior from the Bay Area here who was visiting that same gathering. We found out that on Sunday morning about noon time, Sunday at noon, the last day of the Sundance, a Catholic priest was going to come into the arbor. He was going to serve communion. And that was going to be the end of the Sundance. Warriors were pulling buffalo skulls around, tied to harnesses, because they were not allowed to pierce. The church had complete control over our people. Layman Brightman joined me. We made a decision that we were not going to allow that to happen. And we had to negotiate. We had to negotiate with the Sundancers because they were afraid. They were scared to make a stand that day. Oh, people are going to be upset. They're not going to support the movement if you do something like that. I said, I don't care. If we don't develop that spiritual and cultural faith once again, we'll never move forward as a people. And the word spread all around us. Crowds came the next day on Sunday. And here comes this Catholic priest from Holy Rosary Church, carrying a white bundle in his arm, which we found out later was a sacred pipe. Beaded vestments. Two little altar boys coming behind him. One carrying the blood of Jesus Christ, the other one his body. And me and Layman Brightman walked out in the arbor. You hear sirens coming in the background. People threw stuff at us, told us to get out of there. There was a sacrilege. What were we going to do? No, and we went out and very kindly we asked that father, that priest, okay. Father Stanley, please, the Sundancers no longer want you here. He said they can't have that Sundance, they can't have it without our, without our support, without our sponsorship. That's where the Native American church came from. They had to have a Bible and a teepee. And they took their P.O., their sacred medicine, church had completely control over us. His father, please leave. He said, who are you? I told him who I was. And the founders of the American Indian Movement. He said, I, I heard about you rabble rousers. I heard about you. He said, I'm not going anywhere. I said, father, please, please leave. He said, what are you going to do if I don't leave? I took one arm and Layman Brightman took the other arm. We put it over our shoulders and we tiptoed him out of there. Oh. They loaded us in squad cars and drove us to the reservation line and told us never to come back again. That day, my brothers and sisters, my nephews and nieces, that day we watered the sacred roots of the tree. And that sacred tree grows again all over North America, up in the far Northwest Territory of Canada to the southern tip of South America. Oh, our dances, yeah. our sun dances, and our sacred ceremonies are alive. In the circle that died at Wounded Knee in 1890 that Black Elk talked about, is back here together again. Right here, Alcatraz. 